This year's Legion 5i Pro is nearly exactly the same as last year. Besides a new text on the top cover, a slightly shorter screen due that they gave it a smaller bezel on the bottom, and of course, a slightly adjusted heat pipe inside of the undercarriage, there's not much difference. So the question is, is it worth the performance to go ahead and upgrade to the latest model? And by upgrade, I mean deciding between last year's model and this year's model. Maybe not you purchased last year's model and now you're like, well, I'll just upgrade and get this year's model. I don't really recommend that. So let's jump into just maybe a few of the key basics that I wasn't able to cover during the unboxing, but if you want my full impressions and seeing all the little intricate details and differences, you can go ahead and check that out. I'll link it up at the end of this video. But first and foremost, here is a quick sample of the webcam so you can check it out. This is the camera on the Legion 5i Pro and a little audio sample for you as well. When I back up a little bit, it kind of mellows out. When I get really close, I'm really close to my light. So the camera actually looks pretty good, especially for that 720p webcam. Now the model that I'm reviewing comes with the i7-12700H, RTX 3060, 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD. One thing that really stands out to me about this model, of course, though, is the latest 12th gen CPU. It really kept this laptop cool, had great performance. Although the problem that I'm seeing most with Intel laptops this year compared to Ryzen is the battery life. And so in regards to the battery life, I would say if you're a big advocate of having long on the go battery life, then I would wait for the Ryzen version of this laptop. Just going to put it out there right off the bat. Now, if they decide to go with the Ryzen 7 6800H, which I'm assuming they will for this model, you'll get better battery life, but you won't get substantially better battery life. Where you're gonna see better battery life is in the HS processors. So for instance, the Asus Zephyrus G14 with the Ryzen 9 6900HS, those laptops get amazing battery life. The H series does not get as great of battery life as I would hope, but I think we're definitely gonna see slightly better battery life if we're considering the i7 12700H versus the Ryzen 7 6800H. Now you've seen the battery life results on the screen for this laptop. We have the Passmark productivity battery life. We're streaming a YouTube video until the battery goes dead. And we're running the Photoshop Puget Systems benchmark on repeat until the battery goes dead. And for the video editing battery life, we're running Premiere Pro on loop during a 4K project until the battery runs dead. Now, all of these battery life results that you see on the screen are done in iGPU mode at 35% brightness. Now, if you're curious about a larger breadth of battery life results, I'm gonna be running more tests in the coming days. And so make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on my one month review where I'll show you even more battery life and performance results from this laptop. But for now, I'm just covering the basics for this review. More to come later. Now, in regards to color gamut range, that's one area this laptop did not step it up compared to last year. Uh, we have the 98% sRGB, 71% Adobe RGB, and 72% DCI-P3. Though the brightness was still good, um, around 461 nits, if I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head. This is a good bright 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen that'll get the job done indoors and in bright sunlight if you're working outside like at a coffee shop. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of this model, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Remember, those are affiliate links. So if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I like this keyboard. It has a nice firm response. It's not as maybe snappy as some other keyboards, but I like the soft feel of it. The keys are a plastic material, no soft touch rubberized material on the top of them. So just a basic plastic keycap. And then the trackpad of course is secured well to the chassis. Same size as last year's trackpad, still a great trackpad. And here's a quick audio sample of me using the trackpad and keyboard so you can check that out. Now in regards to the speakers, no changes there, but here's a quick audio sample so you can hear the speakers for yourself. Now, one area that we have seen some improvements is actually based on the software. We now have access to hybrid mode, hybrid iGPU mode, hybrid auto mode, and DGPU mode, so discrete graphics. So basically, we turn off the integrated graphics and we only use the discrete graphics for more display performance. So that's really cool. We also have overdrive 
and GPU overclock. I ran GPU overclock and really the biggest difference that I saw was for 3D modeling. It was not in like video editing or Photoshop, anything like that. The way that the overclock really helped was in 3D modeling most. So if you're a 3D modeling guru, this laptop with that overclock will be helpful. Now it also has panel overdrive. So if you wanna get a faster response time, you can turn that on, but it will decrease of course your battery life results. And as always, we have our standard performance mode, bounce mode, and quiet mode. Now, like I said, I have my standard results coming up here in just a moment, but I will be running more tests in all these different modes and combinations. And you can see that in the one month review. Now, without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks and see how this thing performs. Now, first and foremost, in Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench Single Core, and Multi-Core, this laptop is at the top of the charts for all of those results. So as far as your simulated benchmarks are concerned, you're nailing the simulated benchmarks with this laptop. But life is not done or completed or created in Cinebench R23. So let's get into some more practical real world benchmarks. You look at Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya, you can see that we're sitting at the top of the charts up there with the workstation GPUs. And so this laptop will definitely have what it takes for you inside of 3D modeling programs like Autodesk. Now moving on to PTC Creo and SolidWorks, still performs very well in both of those programs, but it isn't really topping the charts compared to those more workstation focused GPUs and CPUs. This is still a gaming laptop, but it will work well inside of 3D modeling programs. Now switching on into After Effects, this laptop has the best performance I've reviewed so far this year for After Effects, so it's definitely a great pick there. Now moving forward into video editing, I'm gonna start out in DaVinci Resolve, and I was actually really surprised at how well this laptop performed in DaVinci Resolve. Normally, Intel laptops have historically not been great performers in regards to export times out of DaVinci Resolve. However, that's not true with this laptop. These new 12th gen processors are really, really great for exporting out of DaVinci Resolve. It beat out a lot of Ryzen laptops that it would have been beaten by in the past. And of course, with this 3070 Ti has good playback in DaVinci Resolve as well. Now, moving on into Premiere Pro, again, some of the best export times I've seen, 43 seconds for 1080p, two minutes and 36 seconds for 4K, and then it saw 14 minutes and 43 seconds for B-RAW and 17 minutes for red footage. This is These are great times, really gonna speed up your workflow if you're somebody who's often exporting videos, you know, maybe you're posting to YouTube or posting to different content platforms or you know, you're making short films, whatever you're doing, this laptop has great export times. Now, one thing that really impressed me more than anything with this laptop is we had great export times, but we also had cool thermals and quiet fan noise. Now, if you wanted to boost the laptop all the way up to the top performance, you're still gonna see around 50 decibels of fan noise, but you're gonna see 72 degrees Celsius in a two minute and 39 second export time, which is fantastic. Now, in regards to actually editing your footage, the playback on 4K is zero drop frames. Basically, most powerful gaming laptops today are gonna have zero drop frames in 4K, but as you move into B-RAW and RED footage for those 6K resolutions, you usually start to see drop frames. For B-RAW, we only saw 339 drop frames in the test project. And for RED footage, we only saw 3,548. That's actually really good for B-RAW. A lot of laptops last year were seen in the 10 and 12,000 drop frames. Out of my test project, which has 16,477, if I'm not mistaken. So this laptop does very well compared to some of the last year's model. Definitely some improvements with that Intel CPU, the 12th gen versus the 11th gen. So really excited about those results. For that reason, I would say it would definitely be worth going for the 12th gen Intel opposed to the 11th gen Intel as you're seeing those playback results and export times. Now looking inside of Photoshop, this laptop performed very well in Photoshop, topping the charts compared to a lot of the other laptops that I've seen here 
on the channel. It didn't beat out every laptop, but it did get near the top of the charts. Those ProArt Studio Books, which are some of my favorite laptops from last year, can't wait for the refresh for this year, um, had the best performance still on the charts with over a thousand points on the Photoshop benchmark. Now, like I said, where I'm most impressed with this laptop is the thermals. I think it's so great to see quiet fan noise with great thermals. However, the one area that this laptop, because it has Intel loses out, is on battery life. It doesn't have horrible, poor battery life. It just doesn't have great battery life, especially that it comes with the hybrid iGPU mode, which should give us substantially more battery life but it doesn't because Intel's processors are not as optimized for efficiency. They're really optimizing them for performance. They say, hey, if you wanna get an efficient processor, then go ahead and get our mobile processor series. Don't try and get these H series processors for efficiency. But then on the other end of things, we see Ryzen saying, hey, we're gonna give you both performance and efficiency, so come choose us. So really it's up to you what you're looking for. The problem that happens with the Ryzen processors is they're really, really, really hot. And so there's a lot more fan noise. It takes a lot more to cool them down. And so I honestly, a lot of times prefer a cooler laptop um, than a loud, noisy, hot laptop that gets a good battery life. Again, these are decisions that you have to make when purchasing a laptop. Links in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.